I think, it, you know, once you kind of get practice doing this, then it's not that difficult, but this, that, but this is the thing that makes physics difficult for a lot of students. It's uh, how much uh, different stuff you have to uh, remember, recall. Uh, people sometimes have this, uh, this uh, mistaken idea that physics is all about math and not about remembering things. Um, and I'm kind of letting my bias show is the way I have done well in physics and frankly math is through memorization. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a sliding scale. There's uh, some things you have to memorize. There's some things you have to understand conceptually. And the more things you can memorize, the easier it'll be for you on other things. And here, let me, so let me just write down all the different uh, things you have to <laughs> memorize. <laughs> because, uh, so it's talking about the force of the bar behaving like a spring force. So I'm going to use my excellent memory to recall Hooke's law. And this is where having things memorized really helps. Because if you didn't have this memorized, you'll have to look it up in the book. It, it, additional steps you add, it's very challenging. It, it gets frustrating. But if you have it memorized, then great. You can just pull it out of your head and, um, and you won't, it'll be much easier. <laughs> so, okay, let me keep going. Spring force in aiming the arrow, the archer pulls the bar back and holds it in position with a force of 140. Okay, so I'm beginning to see that, okay, so good that I have Hooke's law because I am being given um, the displacement and the force, but uh, I'm not given the spring constant. So I probably will need to figure out spring constant as part of problem solving for this question. Uh, if the mass of the arrow is um, some mass and the spring is massless, okay. What is the speed of the arrow? Immediate speed, oh, what? Oh, this is where I realized this is a, um, hmm, how would you connect? Um, so I guess so what you should start out with is, okay, I need to speed the V. Then you need to connect this to all the different uh, relationships you might know about speed. And this is where, um, depending on what things you remember, what you, things you don't remember, it's very easy to be misled. And uh, let me point out one particular uh, path that goes down the rabbit hole and doesn't lead anywhere that I think uh, people can be misled into. And it's because you see the force and you see the speed. I can imagine people being misled down this way. You look at this kinematics formula uh, or remember this kinematics formula, V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. Or you might even remember the V squared formula. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two times acceleration times the displacement because you have displacement. Hey, are we in the right step? Maybe. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, I have acceleration. So let's use acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. So you see the force and you think, oh, okay, I have force, I have mass. Um, so I just go through this step, calculate for final, let's plug that in, and you will see that that's wrong. <laughs> um, and th this is a, um, this is the part that makes a physics challenging for a lot of people. And it, physics is a discipline that tends to not reward shallow knowledge. And all the things I pulled out here, if uh, you are writing this down, thinking that they are relevant, that would be an, an illustration <laughs> of what could happen with the shallow knowledge. And this is what I mean by shallow. Um, in all the steps of writing this down, actually the last one is fine. I have no issue with the last one. Uh, well, maybe, uh, all right, and let me just keep all of that. All the steps of writing this down, the thing that you forgot is that these equations, they only apply for constant acceleration. And because Hooke's law describes a force, that depends on the displacement. And as after you pull the arrow, as you let it go, as the displacement decreases, force will change, which means acceleration will change, 
which means you don't have constant acceleration. So all these equation, kinematics formulas you wrote down, none of them are applicable. So this is the rabbit hole that you could easily fall into. I want you to highlight that so that you don't. <laughs> um, and it's a, this is the kind of uh, physics problem solving that comes only really with the practice. It's kind of, um, all the, of all the relationships that you remember that relates to this, you need to pull out the ones that are relevant. And here, ones that are relevant is the one that's covered in the chapter. <laughs> so let me do that. Here's an expression that relates to speed that's relevant to here. It's the expression for kinetic energy. So kinetic energy of an object that's moving at some speed is one half mass times the speed squared. And, uh, oh, I forget if this question is out of chapter seven or eight. Uh, let me just use the, uh, can I? Um, mm. Sorry, I, uh, I'm trying to be proper here. Uh, well, actually, chapter eight is part of this homework set, right? So, okay, I, I'm pretty sure this is actually a chapter eight question. So I, I am going to use conservation of energy. So, um, so, so uh, let me um, hold off on fully laying out the conservation of energy problem solving steps. But here, the, what I'm going to use is this. So this is the two snapshots that the problem is describing. I have a, a part of the scenario where the arrow has been pulled. And so, you know, I have this displacement D or some kind of displacement. So the arrow has been pulled and I'm about to fire it. So this is my, uh, what I would call my quote unquote initial. And this will go into the setup where the bow is no longer tense. The arrow has been fired and it's moving with some speed of V. That's the speed that I'm looking for. This is my final or quote unquote final. And I can describe uh, energy involved in this uh, situation. So in this uh, final state, um, I'll have this kinetic energy. So in the final state, I'll have the kinetic energy of one half mv squared. And in this initial state, looking at it carefully, I realize the velocity of the uh, arrow is zero. So all I would have is some form of potential energy. And that's where it's good for you to know, remember, recognize that you have a Hooke's law and chapter seven or eight, I forget which chapter, derived the formula for spring potential energy. And the spring potential energy is given by one half K times the delta x squared. So in the initial state, I have the potential energy, potential energy of one half k times delta x squared. And um, it, this situation looks like a situation where energy is conserved, or specifically mechanical energy is conserved. Um, so I would say my initial energy is equal to my final energy. And going through this reasoning process will yield you this uh, algebraic equation that you can now try to solve for, fill in any gaps. So the equation is one half K delta X squared is equal to one half mass times V squared. And you see one unknown here, which is good. Um, you're gonna solve for that eventually. One problem, you don't see, uh, you see this uh, another unknown spring constant, which you don't know of. That's where you now need to use Hooke's law. That's really why they, give, why they gave you the force here. They didn't give you the force so that you can calculate the acceleration. I mean, you can, but that involves calculus. <laughs> to get to velocity, so it's, that's not the easiest thing to do. But what you can do is you are given for this situation here, you are given the amount of force and the displacement, that's enough information to calculate what the spring constant is. So spring constant should be 
the uh, I'm doing the algebra in my head of force divided by the displacement that you have. I'm absolute values. I'm just gonna. I just want the positive number. I don't want to worry about the signs. So, uh, um, so uh, do I want to plug? Yeah, let me plug in the number here. I have the force 146 divided by, and I'm just gonna use the SI basic unit. So 54 centimeters. That's a 0 0.54 meters. So um, I will work out k there to 70. Point, do not do any rounding. I'm just gonna keep five significant figures and hope that's enough. Um, 270.37. 270.37 Newton per meter. So that's the value of K I'm just gonna use in calculating there. So uh, now I should have enough information to just uh, uh, cancel out the one halves and solve for V. So solving for V, I get V is equal to, uh, move them over. So, uh, well, square root of K over M times Delta X squared. Oh, so I guess I get to use Delta X in two different places, which I guess good. Um, so yeah, let me just plug in the, I can actually simplify this a little bit algebraically. Let me do that. So I can uh, apply the square root to Delta X. Then I get to pull Delta X out of the square root times still square root of K over N. That doesn't go away. So I'll plug in all the numbers here. That should give me an answer in meters per second. Delta X, once again, I'm using basic SI unit, so uh, 0 0.54 times um, square root of, and I know how my calculator works, so I have to do the, uh, the, the ratio first, so 270.37 divided by the mass, 60 grams, I need a basic SI unit, so I'm gonna do it in kilograms, 0 0.06 kilograms. Um, on parenthesis, and then I think a square root. Okay, <laughs> I'm just watching this input here to make sure I'm doing it correctly for my calculator. Equals, okay, 36.25 uh, meters per second. Uh, 36.25 meters per second. Yeah, 36.25. Um, and uh, so once the rounding issue is fixed, you should see this instruction go away. The idea is that uh, intermediate rounding is okay if you keep like one or two extra significant figures. Um, so we're going around all the questions to fix that, but I got to this a little bit late. It'll get fixed very soon. Um, okay, so this question, so once you kind of get used to physics problem solving, it's not, no single step here was mathematically challenging or even conceptually challenging. But um, what's challenging about this question is combination of everything. Is that there are just so many wrong things you can do that knowing the right thing to do is the, what the challenging part. So it, this is really where the portable TA helps most because the only way to get better at questions like this is through practice. And the portable TA is a book of um, problem solving solutions. So that if you got trapped in that rabbit hole that I was describing earlier, if you have a question like this in portable TA, you can look at the answer and see, oh yeah, that's a rabbit hole that I shouldn't have fallen. I should do it the other way.